Hey, 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 hi, everybody. I hope you're all having a good day. I hope you're all smiling and enjoying your lovely day. So in this following tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you on how to achieve an eyebrow over hair effect while also teaching you on how to achieve um, basically the hair shadow effect using a hair mesh rather than um, light sources, basically. This will all be pretty much just an explanation on what, you know, we call stencils um, or just you know, adjusting render cues, but the nickname is pretty much just stencils, pretty much. But either way, um, for this tutorial, though, I want to go over um, what you're going to be needing and what you're probably going to be, you know, probably going to, you know, experience, basically. So first and foremost, you require UniVRM 0. Point, well, I recommend 0. 0.89 and above. Um, you could use 0 0.66, but that is an old version of UniVRM, and VT Face uses 0 0.89 now, so I recommend use that version. And if you want to use a higher version, you can if you want, as long as um, you make sure that the UniVRM version is not super buggy. Um, because UniVRM is still in development, there are going to be some bugs and stuff. So keep that in mind. Now, besides that, you're going to be needing Unity version 2019.4.31 um, because we're going to be using the VSF SDK to have uh, to achieve this effect, basically. Um, at least in this case. Of course, keep in mind um, if you're using this tutorial for non VSF avatar VT face, like if you're using this for game dev or if you're using this for, I don't know, VR chat or something, you can do that. You don't need the UniVRM in that case, but for VTubers, since I am speaking in the video a uh, VTuber perspective, um, for my, for this case, you're going to need 2019.4.31, and you're going to be needing the newest version of the VSF SDK, so please make sure you download that. I'm also going to be using Lil Toon Shader. Um, it's a free shader you can get on Boost. I'll make sure a link in the description. If you're someone who prefers Poyomi over Lil Toon, yes, this can also work with Poyomi. I'm not going to go over Poyomi, however. You're going to have to apply your knowledge, basically just seeing how I do it with Lil Toon, which I'll make sure to explain exactly what I'm doing. But it's pretty much the same method, the same steps with Koyomi. It's really simple. Uh, you'll just have to make sure to remember, you know, look at the little tune saying, then kind of interpret it. So keep that in mind. And pretty much, uh, that's pretty much all you pretty much really need. Mesh wise, I do want to explain this. Uh, so if you're a Roy model, you're perfectly fine. Um, for some models, so if you're like a from scratch model, um, I do recommend. For like, let's say the eyebrows, make sure that the eyebrows are not double-sided. Uh, basically where they have thickness. Uh, it might cause some issues. You should probably be fine, but you may experience some issues most likely. For my case, I never really experienced issues, but some people might have. Uh, it really depends on the settings and what effect you're achieving. So I recommend keep your eyebrows a uh, single, you know, basically just a, like, like a play mesh sort of. Uh, kind of depends on what you're going for. If you want to keep it double-sided, that's your choice. It's just a matter of how you mess with the setting to make sure that they're done right, basically. And also just a matter of how everything else is. But for the most part, for my model, my um, eyebrows, they don't have any thickness. They're just like a plain mesh, um, pretty much. And then my hair has, you know, double-sided thickness. And of course, I have my hair shadow modeled as well. So if your character's hair is modeled like this as well, this, you know, we're gonna go over how to set this. Because you can see here with my hair shadow, it's going through my character's face instead of staying, staying intact, basically. So... Yeah, so that's what we're going to do. Uh, this should be pretty simple, but uh, with that being said, though, let's go ahead and, well, begin the process, basically. Alright, so for the first step, what we're going to be doing is we're going to start off with achieving the eyebrow over hair effect before we do the, um, the hair making it into a shadow, basically. Now, for my case, with how I set up my model, I have a material called face detail. This is basically not only my eyebrows, but it's also my eyes as well. 
um, or my eye socket and my eyelashes. So if you want to achieve the eye over hair effect, this also applies the same thing as well. If you want it where it's just the eyebrows only, make sure that you have, you know, separate, you know, more separate materials for that. For my case, um, I have them into just one material. Uh, my eyes are a separate material though, but for my face detail, eyebrow, and the eye socket and stuff, one material. So what you're going to do is you're going to set the eyebrow or the eyes um, or whichever you want to basically be ahead of the hair. And then you're also going to select the hair itself. Now you're also going to select hair stencil as well because for right now, before we get into the shadow stuff, we're going to consider this as part of the hair basically. So you're going to include um, these two to start off with, just to start. And we're going to set this as Lil Tune. For my model, I set every all my materials into Lil Tune basically. So uh, you just go click on the shader here and just click on Lil Tune at the bottom. And it should have this. For my case, I have to update Lil Tune though. But what you're going to do is you're going to click on Advanced tab, right? And what we're going to do, uh, it doesn't matter about the shadows. You can set up the shadows, the outlines, and stuff. Uh, however you want. I don't care about that right now. I care about trying to achieve the effect. For the stencil, the um, hair shadow I have here and the hair here, what we're going to do is we're going to go here. So we have stencil. Stencil, um, this is where we're going to basically set up you know, our stencil settings here, and then the rendering, we have our render queue that we have to set up, basically. So we need to have both of these set up properly to achieve the effect. To start off, um, for the hair, you're going to set the render queue to 2001. This is a start. I'm going based off of what I personally set up, but your model may be different. So I do recommend playing with the render queue and the settings. Um, but I'm just going to show you based on my personal settings, and it's up to you on how you personally want to adjust to fit your model best and what effect you're looking for. But for my hair, I set to 2001. For my face details, I set to a value of 1,999. This is also the same one I set for my glasses um, because of a certain, mainly because of my stencil, but I'm not going to get into my glasses stuff. But there's a little extra side note, I guess. But... Either way, um, let me just check real quickly. So, basically once you have that, we're going to be setting up our uh, stencil stuff. So to start off, um, I'm clicking on the wrong tab here, one second. Um, so what we're going to be doing, first and foremost, is we are going to make sure that for the face detail and the hair, we are going to have a reference number. For my model, I've set to 53, but it could be set to any number like 2 or 1 or something like that. Um, I think for other shaders, you may want to have a more specific number. Um, for for my case and with Lil Tune, uh, say for mine, I set all my materials to 53 for Lil Tune because that's just, it worked well with me. But with another shader that I uh, was using, it this doesn't really apply as it's a little bit more pickier on the number. But once again, just really depends on exactly, you know, the shader. So make sure you experiment with it. But that's why I did. This is also the same thing I did with Poyomi as well. So for the hair, we're going to set the, uh, the comp here. We're going to set that as greater equal. And then... Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the number, uh, or pass, my bad number, uh, the pass to zero, basically. Now, if by any chance you have outlines, right, you also need to make sure, now, once again, um, you gotta keep in mind to, to, uh, manually put the outline here. Hair stencil, I don't want an outline there, um. But do keep in mind, though, that if you're going to add an outline, you're going to have to also adjust the stencil as well for it, which should be pretty simple. Uh, usually, I would make sure it's the same value as this one, unless for specific reasons. Um, there might be some certain cases where the outline has to have a different setup to the top part here. Um, once again, it just depends on the model. It depends on what effect you're doing and how crazy the model is. But for my model... I just did this very simple um, keep it very simple basically and as for my um, as for my face detail though which I'm making sure I say this correctly 
Um, for my face detail, what I had to do was I had to set the comp to, um, let me actually check. Uh, I set the comp to always, and then the pass, I set to decrement wrap. And that is pretty much how I achieved the eyebrows over here, as you can see here. See? That's how I pretty much just did that. Pretty simple. Um, hopefully that quickly explained it. But as for the, um, the hair shadow here, because while we have the eyebrows over the hair and also the, you know, the eyes are also going over the hair as well, which I'm trying to get a good angle for this. Um, oh yeah, that's right. Um... That's right, um, so hold on real quickly. Oh yeah, that's right, um, so there's actually a reason why, in case you're wondering why my model is doing this right now, that's because I didn't, um, set up the other materials right here, um, to make sure that they compensate for the render queue stuff. So this is the reason why I personally set all my materials, uh, to be Lil Toon. Which I'm going to go ahead and unselect these though. But that's why I set all my materials to little tune. And for me, I have to man... Well, first of all, once again, it really just depends on what you're doing with your model. And how intense you want your setup. Uh, but you might want to set all your materials to little tune. Or set them all to Poyomi. Depends. Um, but let me try to set the shader. At least for the body to little tune. Just to keep things simple. And I'm going to set this uh to replace yeah see um so making sure to set the body um i set the body to replace uh fixes the issue same thing with the uh body stencils um i could do that although once again for the shadows we're gonna do something a little different so for the body um because i just have that and i'll make sure to set the reference number to 53 um but you can also change it however depending on your setup Basically, um, let me just make sure I do this right. Okay, so for my hair stencils, basically, and even body stencils as well, um, the settings I have, so I'll start with hair stencil here. Uh, basically, the for the hair stencils, I have the settings different. So right here, I copied uh, the, you know, the input I put here for the main hair. But the hair stencil should actually have a different setup. So the comp should actually be set to equal. And as for the pass, it's set to uh, decrement wrap. Um, and there are going to be some issues. So uh, there are, you know, the little tiny, tiny little hair piece that you're seeing right there that's sticking out. Uh, for my case, I have to, once again, set all my materials to little tune and then adjust the... Um, the stencil settings and then the render queue. For the most part, it's just stencil shape. Set the stencil shape. The I, I'm, I'm having a hard time saying uh, settings. Settings. Um, but basically, though, uh, for the most part, the render queue. I mean, you can st still play with it, but I wouldn't play with it too much, um, unless it has to do with you know transparency being weird or. Um, Depending on how you're layering it, think of like Photoshop and how you layer your, um, the mo you know, the character's part. Like a live 2D mall, for instance. That's a perfect example. If you know how live 2D stuff, Render Cube basically emulates how you do the art layers. And the stencil here is just, you know, helping out with, well, um, you know, the stencil. Like how it's basically just, you know... How it impacts depending on the order that it's in, basically. If I were to explain it right, I'm probably explaining it a little awkward. Because um, I am trying my best to explain it as simple as I can. But, either way, um, at least you kind of understand at least the basics on at least getting the eyebrow, the eyes over the hair. And then, uh, pretty much to make sure that your stencil do work, of course, yes, don't mind the weird shading I have here. Because, once again, it takes some time to make sure that the entire mall looks good. Just keep that in mind. Um, I just wanted to at least show you the basics. But you can see here on the side of my hair, though, you see that the, um... So if I go to hair stencil, right, let's say I set this to always, uh, right? You can see how, um, like, just to, like, show you... You can see how, like, the hair is, like, kind of, like, still, like, in front of the face. Like, you can see it. Like, 
like as if it's like not like acting like a shadow but it's like just a floating mesh but when I add equal it looks like an actual shadow basically yeah um, pretty much that's what the effect you're trying to look for if you're trying to achieve the hair uh, shadow effect with Lil Toon uh, or even Poyomi. Uh, Poyomi, I'm not sure how it's going to react as I don't really personally use Poyomi. Mainly just because uh, the... For me personally, the AO maps are a little finicky with Poyomi, at least in my case with what I'm doing. And I just have a bit of a difficult time with uh, just certain effects with Poyomi. So that's why I use Little Tune. But either way, um, you could pretty much... Also another thing too... Uh, you can mess around with the stencil and the rendering, uh, even for screen space shader stuff, which, um, I will try to revisit screen space shader stuff and maybe I can make another tutorial regarding how I achieve, like, my noise filter effect, um, when I get back to it and I kind of figure out a better solution to it, but... Either way, though, um, I hope that this tutorial helps you out. Uh, let me know if you have any other questions regarding achieving this effect. Um, if you want a little bit more in-depth. Um, once again, for the most part, that's just kind of the basics I just taught you. It's just a matter of how you want it set up on your mall. If you want to keep it simple or you want to go a little bit complex how I did with my mall. Where I set everything to little tunes, set up my shelves, my AO maps, my outlines, um, all that other crazy stuff. So just apply this knowledge to your project and hopefully that, that you know, hopefully that this helps you out. And yeah, let me know. I'll put my socials at the end of the video. So hopefully it can help you out, um, you know, get in contact with me. So if you want to ask more questions or you want to have a call with me so I can personally teach you on how to achieve it better for your specific situation, feel free to talk to me on Discord for the most part. I recommend Discord. However, if you don't have a Discord, you can email me. I don't recommend email because I'm much slower to respond via email. Um, but you can also comment on YouTube, uh, that's a more faster way of getting in touch with me, because I, I always check my notifications, but yeah. Either way, um, I hope you have a lovely day everyone, I'll see you guys next time. Bye!